Uh, in the first uh, class, we have discussed about the importance of uh, quality of water and uh, enhancement of uh, quality of wastewater. We also discussed uh, the, the quality requirement for various uh, beneficial uses. The beneficial uses are domestic, uh, industrial, recreational and uh, the fourth one is about agricultural use. These are the four important uses and we discussed about the water quality criteria uh, for those things. Then we said that there is a, in, uh, we have also said that the water available to us in terms of quality is not able to um, satisfy the requirement of uh, the water quality for these beneficial uses. And hence, uh, there is a need for treatment, okay. We said that there is a treatment uh, is required and in order to achieve the treatment we have to have a treatment plants and these treatment plants uh, have a uh, life period lifetime or the design uh, period so these design uh, periods are essential important in fact if you want to if you design a treatment plant today you should serve the population today as well as it should serve the population say 30 years from today or 50 years from today. And hence, there is a need for the population projection. So forecasting the population is also required and also the forecasting the water need is also required. So that's what we have discussed till now. And in the today's lecture, I would like to say uh, the water and wastewater quality enhancement and the philosophy of treatment. So once we understand this particular thing, we could go further how exactly we could uh, treat the water. Uh, water is uh, so essential, very essential for the human life and it can become scourge, scourge meaning the dangerous or hazardous for health if water is polluted or contaminated. Here I would like to distinguish between the pollution and contamination. Pollution is normally, if I write it here pollution, is normally by organic and inorganic material. Any foreign body which is of organic and inorganic uh, in nature present in water is uh, we term it as a pollution. So we should not have any foreign material of this origin. Second thing is contamination. Second term that we normally use is contamination. Contamination is presence of organisms that is uh, pathogenic organisms in water. So the presence of organic pathogens in water is termed as contamination. If I say what is contaminated means it means most of the time the water is contaminated with the microorganisms uh, which cause disease. So that's what the difference we can make between these two things, pollution and contamination. And water should be, uh, second point in the slide, this is about the slide one. I would like to state some of the, you know, uh, explanations for these slides. I would like to take it. Second thing is water should be aesthetic, safe. So water should be aesthetic means aesthetic from the point of view of uh, consumer. Consumer should have a pleasing water and uh, safe is from the point of view of uh, the public health authority 
and uh, civic authorities have a responsibility to supply the safe drinking water. However, now water is uh, heavily polluted by anthropogenic and natural uh, activities. So again here the explanation is the water what we have now is not uh, you know free of pollution it has got lot of pollution. The pollution uh, of water or contamination of water could be from the anthropogenic activities. What is anthropogenic activity? Anthropogenic activity is a man made activity that is the uh, we are responsible for creating the pollution. So the anthropogenic activity can be again divided into into several categories anthropogenic activities result in the pollution causes the pollution and contamination of water and uh, this can be divided into the following categories one is suspended load I can call this anthropogenic activity causing the suspended load to the environment so suspended load it could be for water bodies in this case we will take a water body it could cause what is called a chemical load it could introduce chemical load to the water bodies it could introduce microbial load to the water bodies. So these are the three types of uh, uh, loads these loads are the contamination or pollution from the suspended from the chemical and microbiological suspended load is nothing but um, introduction of suspended particles in water suspended particles they could be of a colloidal nature they could be colloidal or they could be coarse type of particles are introduced into the water which are not uh, natural uh, habitats which are not natural components of water these are foreign bodies. Similarly chemical load if you take the chemical load can be divided into two parts again sub parts one is organic another is inorganic. organic and inorganic loads. Organic loads can be further divided into two parts one is uh, what is called a into biodegradable and another is non biodegradable biodegradable. organic matter two types one is biodegradable and another is non biodegradable. Biodegradable organic matter example is presence of any organic matter which can be used by microorganisms for example domestic waste water is biodegradable. So the examples could be uh, any organic matter like uh, domestic waste water or industrial waste water non biodegradable here if you look at non biodegradable non biodegradable organic matter is also organic matter but cannot be attacked by microorganisms these are like uh, you know the phenols one example could be phenol another example could be plastic there is a plastic bags etc we use in nowadays uh, or um, for last lot uh, for several years we have been using this plastic is a non biodegradable type of plastic. So if you go to the another component that is inorganic component uh, of the chemical load this could be of uh, you know pesticides to kill the pests to kill the pests or insecticides to kill the insects and uh, these are like DDT. BHC or uh, the most um, common I mean modern thing is endosulfon these are the pesticides what we have and we have fertilizers some other examples are fertilizers 
inorganic fertilizers, organic fertilizers, so on and so forth come under this particular group. The chemical load is the microorganisms which we there is a pathogenic microbes which we introduce in the water due to the anthropogenic activity. These are the three types of categories just broadly we can divide it at this moment of time. And also uh, we have said the water is heavily polluted with the anthropogenic activity as well as the natural activity. Nature also introduced the pollution. There is a lot of pollutants that are introduced by the nature into the water courses. Now another point I would like to say is that water courses that is the rivers, lakes and any freshwater bodies are now polluted by the domestic wastewater, industrial wastewater and uh, agricultural waste. Again here I would like to point out certain things that is domestic wastewater, this is slide 1 only continuing domestic wastewater and industrial wastewater. WW is a wastewater, stands for wastewater. These are what is called uh, point sources of pollution. These are called point sources of pollution. That means I can identify the point of entry of pollution from the domestic sector as well as industrial sector. These are point sources uh, while the agricultural sector is a non-point source because the wastewater comes through the agricultural runoff. Agricultural runoff is a non-point source. So if you have to deal with the uh, pollution, you should know whether it is a point source or non-point source. If it is a point source, it is easier to identify uh, the pollute uh, where exactly the pollutant is entering into the river. If it is a non-point source, it is difficult. It can enter from several points and so on and so forth. So these are the some of the aspects that we could uh, take, uh, think about the uh, causes of pollution. Now the I will go to the slide number two and try to explain things because that is essential for me to explain certain points here before we can go into the subject matter. Before water is supplied to the community, quality should be enhanced and that is very essential. And we should meet the water quality standards. Water quality standards should be met. Uh, who is setting these water quality standards? In fact, water quality standards are set from the guidelines given by WHO. For example, we have got World Health Organization WHO guidelines for water quality. They are only guidelines, they are not standards. Okay, they give guidelines only, they are not standards. Okay. Uh, WHO guidelines for water quality, that is for domestic water quality, uh, for the agricultural water quality, is given by the World Health Organization. In fact, you could get uh, this information on the water quality standards from the net. You go to the computer and then go to the website of World Health Organization and then uh, through any search engine you can get this particular thing. Now these are merely guidelines. These guidelines are adopted by different countries, by different countries and these guidelines become standards. These standards are known as water quality standards. Each country have their own set of standards. Most of the standards are coming from the WHO guidelines. So these standards uh, have authority vested in them. If uh, the municipality does not supply the water conforming to the standard, then, uh, then there is going to be problem for the municipality. They are supposed to supply the water. Now uh, we have to supply water conforming to the standards, okay, that is what one thing. Second thing is that it is not just sufficient to supply the water conforming to the standards. Simultaneously at the same time we also have to do certain other things. We should enhance the wastewater quality also. Wastewater quality has to be enhanced. Since 
if you discharge the untreated waste water into the rivers, the river water quality will become poor. Okay, it will affect the river water quality. So that is essential that we should also treat the waste water before it is disposed of into the rivers. That is an essential part of this particular thing, what I would like to say. So protecting the water okay, from the polluted sources is very, very essential. So that is called a source protection. Source protection is an effective method for maintaining the high quality water, uh, high quality raw water, which you take uh, that raw water for the, for the treatment, for the drinking purposes, and then as a result of this protection of uh, the source water, okay, the cost of treatment also will decrease. Now let us see how exactly we can do that. So again, continuing with the slide 2, I would like to elaborate the following aspect, how exactly we are going to uh, integrate the water treatment and wastewater treatment vis-a-vis -vis a river. So let me say that this is a river. Maybe I can extend this river here. So this is a river and this is a flow is in this direction. It is flowing in this direction. And uh, I take the water, draw the water for the water supply. I would like to take the water and this is upstream side of the river and this is the downstream side of the river because the flow of river is in this direction. So I have an in intake structure. So this could be called as intake structure which takes the water from the river and then the water is taken through a pipeline which is called as a transmission line. This is called a transmission line. I take the water through the transmission line through a water treatment plant. So this is my water treatment plant. And in water treatment plant, there are several units and these several units would enhance the quality of water. We will see later on what are the different units in a water treatment plant. So water treatment plant produces a water as per the st standards, it produces the water as per the standards and this water, treated water is supplied to the community through what is called a distribution system. Let us say that this is a distribution system. I am supplying the water to the consumer through the distribution system. This is a treated water. I am supplying this to the community. And the consumers use this water and uh, produce wastewater that is the spent water. So that water from this consumer from these points are taken through a pipe network of pipelines. These are all network of pipelines just schematically I am representing and uh, all of them will join and then goes to a wastewater treatment plant. So this particular thing, this is a distribution system is supplying the water to community and this is the sewerage system. Sewerage system is network of pipelines uh, which collect the wastewater from the houses and take that wastewater to a wastewater treatment plant. So this is a wastewater treatment plant. From this wastewater, I mean the input to the wastewater treatment plant is the wastewater and the output coming out of this particular unit is the treated effluent, right? So in fact, again, the wastewater treatment plant is not one unit. There are several units in them. I will see that what are the units and how exactly to design that afterwards. So this treated effluent, treated effluent, what we call normally, goes into the river back, is discharged into the river. It goes into the river. So in other words, this is the intake. Intake is the, the river is the source for the water and also for the sink. It is a sink. It is a source and it is a sink. 
it is source here and sink over other side, downstream side of this. So, I have what I have done is that I have drawn the water from the river, treated it, supplied to the people, people consume that water and produce the wastewater and this wastewater is collected through a network of pipelines and then that wastewater goes into a wastewater treatment plant, gets treated and then the treated effluent is going back into the river. So, that, may, that means I am taking the water from the river and putting back the treated effluent into the river. That is what we are trying to do this. So, that means both these things are essential. The, if I did not do the wastewater treatment, then what would happen is the quality, if I just discharge the wastewater from here, untreated effluent, untreated uh, wastewater, if I discharge here, the quality of the river water will suffer. And any user downstream side, any town downstream side of this particular river will get bad quality water, okay, bad quality water. So that means there is uh, all, all the more important that we have to um, protect the uh, source, source of water should be protected. That is what is the now highlight of uh, you know, all international organizations and stressing the protection of the uh, water uh, resources. So now, I would like to go to this particular slide, that is slide number 3, which is uh, indicative of uh, various aspects. You can see here, uh, rain water is coming down, rain is falling and the rain water is coming down and the rain water quality is pretty good. Okay. As the rain water flows through the atmosphere, it gets contaminated or it gets polluted, whatever it, you want to say. Pollution is because of gases that get dissolved into the water, atmospheric gases dissolve in water and then the water gets polluted. If there is air pollution in the area and if you, if the rain falls there and that rain water will have the pollutants because of the air pollution. One uh, in important thing is that acid rain, acid rain is because if the water contains the acid mist, I mean if the, if the air contains the acid mist, when the rain is falling, that acid is washed down and it comes to the uh, surface. So that is one of the things we have. The, that is the water quality, rain water quality is pretty good before it enters the atmosphere. As soon as it enters the atmosphere, it gets polluted with the gases that are present in the uh, atmosphere. And afterwards, when the water comes to the surface, again I would like to um, go to this slide number 3 and explain certain aspects of this slide number 3. Uh, as soon as the water comes to the, touches the surface, let me put slide number 3. As soon as the water touches the surface of the ground, then the suspended load will be introduced into the water. That is particles, uh, suspended particles will be introduced into the water. As soon as water comes into contact with the strata, then chemical load also is introduced. So as a result of which, if I were to plot a graph between the quality, this is the quality, the, the parameters of quality I am not defining here at, I am not at defining, I am just saying the quality. Okay? How I am measuring the quality, I am not telling you now. I would be, we will discuss about that particular thing afterwards. And then here time or distance as the river is flowing, so this is the rain water, okay, rain water has got a high quality that is what we said, so you connect with this particular slide. So we have this is the river water quality, so this is say that river water quality. this is the river water quality. You can see here very clearly as the river flows down okay, into the plains, as it is flowing down, the quality of water is decreasing. The slope of the graph will tell you the decrease in the quality, deterioration in the quality of water. Okay, natural pollution or man-made pollution because of that it is decreasing. Now what I do is that I will draw the water. Uh, let us say that there is a town A here along the, on the river and I draw the water from this river. 
and uh, I have to supply the water for the drinking purposes. Let me say that, uh, let me extend this particular thing. I say that this particular line represents drinking water quality. This is, this line represents the drinking water quality. That means I have to supply the water wherever you are along the course of the river, you have to supply the water to this particular level, quality should be this particular level. So a town A is drawing the water and supplying the water to the, uh, to the people. If it has to supply the water to the, uh, to the people, what should it do is, it has to, maybe I will remove this one, you have understood this is slide 3. So this is the treatment that should be provided. So enhancement of quality of water is to this extent, that is water treatment, I should provide at this stage. I think it is clear, I am drawing the water from the river, river quality water is not so good. So I have to meet the standard, standard is at this level, this is the same scale, quality standard, okay. So this much of the treatment, I mean to this extent I have to give the treatment. This de, uh, defines the extent of treatment that I should give the water at this particular A. A is a point, A is a town which is drawing the water. So the same town also produces the wastewater, it utilizes the water and produces the wastewater and if I look at the wastewater quality, maybe that wastewater quality is something like this. So this is the quality of wastewater. Waste, WW is wastewater, this is QLY quality, I will put it here because anyway this is axis, vertical axis is quality, wastewater quality. Wastewater quality has gone down, right. So wastewater quality is low. So in order to, uh, uh, what I should do now, I, if I put this same wastewater into the river, then the quality of water is going to decrease, river water quality will decrease. What I do is, I can treat the wastewater. So that means I will do a treatment, let us say that this is the treatment, wastewater treatment I do, treatment of wastewater and then put back the water into the river, that is what I, I, I showed here, source and sink relationship. I put the wastewater into the river, then there is no problem at all, okay. I am maintaining the river water quality. I have put the way, treated effluents and hence there is no problem. Suppose if I do not do this, what is going to happen? Most of the times it is not done to the uh, extent that is required. Many towns do not follow the standards, uh, they do not co conform to the effluent standards. As a result of which what would happen is that, let me say that I do not have wastewater treatment now, okay. If I did not have wastewater treatment, and if I have got the domestic wastewater, this is all domestic wastewater. So what would happen is that the quality of the water will uh, go down to this extent, maybe that to this extent and then it would also increase and may come back to this particular level, will come back to this particular level, okay. So it quality goes down, this all quality scale, quality goes down and quality will increase. So this particular process by means of which the river sort of uh, purifies itself is called self purification capacity. So due to the self purification capacity, purification capacity, the river waters get purified provided the pollutant that is put in to the river is biodegradable. If it is non-biodegradable, then it will keep on accumulating. If the pollutant is conservative, it will remain in the river for a long time, okay. You can see here what will happen, the river eventually reaches the same quality, okay, but there is some quality deterioration during this particular period. So this particular period, water quality in the river is poor, water quality in the river is poor during this particular stretch of the river, okay, this is during this time period, during this distance it is poor. 
So, now that is the only problem if you do not treat the waste water. If you treat the waste water, then there is this problem can be taken care of. Otherwise, there will be some quality deterioration in the river. That is what we are trying to say. Now, let us take there is another town B here. This is a B, B town. And B town is drawing the water from the river, and then the extent of treatment is equal to this water treatment. And you can see very clearly that this, this scale is bigger than this scale. Okay. Extent of water treatment is more if the river qu water quality is poor. River water quality is less, then the extent of treatment has to be more because I have anyhow meet. I have to meet these standards, water quality standards. Okay. Similarly, you have a wastewater that is produced here. B is a produces a wastewater. Maybe this is a quality of wastewater. Wastewater quality. So this is the quality of wastewater at this stage. Okay, and again, the extent of treatment to be given is more. Okay, you have to give the extent of treatment. If you do not give any treatment, again this natural purification things will take place and as a result of which you may have this graph. Like this, reputation of this one and the poor water quality will be there in this distance. So, this goes on continuously till the river reaches the ocean. Okay. But what we have to do is that we should uh, supplement uh, the supplement the self purification capacity with the treatment. I should treat it and also utilize some extent self purification capacity of the river. So, that is going to be uh, better than without any treatment. Okay, this is what goes on as far as the water quality uh, and wastewater quality is concerned. So, what all I want to stress again is that it is essential that we treat the water, but it is also essential equally important that we also treat the wastewater. If we treat the wastewater, our water uh, resources are good, better quality and hence we will have a better quality water. Let us go to the slide number 4. For this particular thing, uh, I am bringing a, a issue now here that I want to supplement the self purification capacity of river. For that, I require treatment. In order to treatment, in order to do the treatment, I employ in the water treatment plant here, as well as in the wastewater treatment plant here, certain units, which are unit operations, and some of them are unit processes. So we are going to introduce certain unit operations and unit processes. And what are these unit operations? What are these unit processes? We should uh, incorporate. We should uh, we should introduce, particularly in the water treatment plants. Okay. Afterwards, we'll see the wastewater treatment plants also in the water treatment plants to make the water to conform to the standards of drinking water quality. So, for that, the main objective of treatment is water treatment. In this case, I want to produce aesthetic water, water which is aesthetic. That is, the water should not contain any color, taste, odor, or turbidity. So, these are the things. Uh, turbidity is the presence of suspended solids. Turbidity interferes with the passage of light. If the water is turbid, you cannot see clearly other side of the uh, water. If you put it in a glass. You know, you cannot see it. So, that particular thing is obstructs the passage of light is the uh, turbidity. And we also have to produce water safe, safe from the point of view of the microorganisms and safe from the point of view of the absence of toxic uh, chemicals. So, toxic chemicals are like heavy metals and um, insecticides, pesticides, and so on and so forth. So, these things should not be present in water. So, my main objective is to produce water which is aesthetic, pleasing and it also should be safe. These are the two objectives. So, for that let us move to this uh, next slide that is slide number 5. So, the water treatment plant again I will take the objective or the philosophy of the water treatment plant if I take it that is uh, slide number 5 uh, which gives me a flow sheet. 
and in water treatment plant what are the different units uh, that we should have in order to produce water which is aesthetic and which is safe okay that's what it is what we are trying to do it so the major objective of any water treatment plant for that matter is removal of turbidity that is slide number 5 removal of turbidity that is making the water pleasing so removal of turbidity is a very important thing removal of uh, color taste odor removal of turbidity here itself again right color taste odor producing components i should remove that is very important thing so this will make water aesthetic and people will drink that water okay without any hesitation second thing is that i have to make water safe the second objective is that safety the safety from the microorganisms that's what i said safety from pathogens that means no microbes should be present no pathogens should be present in the water and no toxic chemicals should be present in water you should not have any toxic chemical also the toxic chemicals like i told you the uh, pesticides insecticides so on and so forth now let us see the flow diagram which has been uh, projected here i take the river water river water is the source of water that is through intake structures and transmission line i am bringing the water to the water treatment plant once i bring the water to the water treatment plant what i should do is i have to look at various um, we should do the water quality analysis i know that what are the um, what is the turbidity present whether the color is present whether the whether a taste and odor causing organics are present we should try to find out the physical parameters chemical parameters so on so now what we do is that when water comes here from the river water this is the raw water and river water river water if you see river water has definitely suspended load it has got what is called suspended load that's what we said so river water has suspended load that means suspended solids are present in the river water and i need to remove these suspended solids before i supply the water to the people otherwise people will not drink that particular water okay so if i look at this what are the different types of suspended particles are there they are colloidal particles colloidal particles are present and colloidal particles have got two sizes okay one is 1 nanometer to say 500 micrometers and 500 micrometers 1 nanometer to 500 ni micrometers this is one particular size 500 micrometers no not 500 nano i should say 500 nanometers same thing now Na 1 man nanometer to 500 nanometers nanometers means 10 to the power of minus 9 of a meter so the second group is that 500 nanometers to roughly these are all rough estimates rough figures i am trying to give you here about uh, say uh, 10 micrometers and this, these are very fine colloids and these are the colloids and then there is a coarse suspension coarse particles particles which have got a size greater than 10 micrometers particle size is greater than 10 micrometers these are the rough estimates and uh, different some differences will be there it doesn't matter at this stage the size of the particle but all what i want to say is that there are particles in this river water of these sizes colloidal and coarse this is a fine colloid and there is a bigger colloid this is a bigger colloid 
and uh, these are the coarse particles. So, in order to make these colloidal particles to settle down in the in the in the tank uh, by gravity, we require certain chemicals. Okay, what we do is that we add certain chemicals to the treatment plant to the water. We add chemicals to the water, raw water in the treatment plant. These chemicals are generally alum and lime. Mostly it is alum, sometimes the combination of alum and lime. Sometimes there is a need of adding an electrolyte or I mean a, some other coagulant aids. So all these things will go added and then there is a rapid mix here. A rapid mix is required to disperse the chemical into the water rapidly. Very quickly I want to disperse the chemicals into the water and this particular thing after this rapid mix will, will go into what is called a coagulation and flocculation unit. Coagulation and flocculation unit. It goes into a coagulation flocculation unit. The purpose the what happens in the coagulation unit is that the small colloidal particles after getting neutralized by alum, they get neutralized by alum and then the small colloidal particles combine together to form a flock. So in coagulation and flocculation, the coagulation what will happen is that the flock formation or the neutralization or destabilization of colloidal particles will take place. I will use a technical term destabilization of colloids will take place. The colloids are destabilized, their uh, property of being uh, separated is removed, the property is destroyed, okay, that property is destroyed. So they are destabilized, okay. When they get destabilized, then they form, they come together and form a flock. So in the flocculation, this is a process wherein the destabilized particles are flocculated. So the flock of destabilized particles, destabilized, destabilized particles will occur, flock formation will take place. Flocculation is the formation of a flock, coagulation is the destabilization of colloids. These are the two things essential. So these things Coagulation is brought about by the chemicals, addition of chemicals and flocculation is brought about by induced slow mixing. So for the flocculation we use what is called a slow mixing. So these things will uh, study greater details when we take up the design aspect of these things. At this time I want to show the a flow diagram of this. Then after this coagulation and flocculation, then the flocks which are formed here, the flocks have formed and these flocks are to be removed and the flock, uh, the flocks are removed by what is called uh, gravity sedimentation. So following this I have got a sedimentation tank. The purpose of sedimentation tank is to remove uh, the flocks that are formed in the coagulation and flocculation. So the sedimentation removes the flocks. Okay. After this sedimentation we have, that means from here I will take it here and then it will go to a unit called a filtration. So what would happen in sedimentation is the flocks will be removed and the removal is not 100 percent, some residual flocks will go out. So that means in this water, this is a water flow of water, the some residual alum flocks, some residual alum flocks will escape in the water and still it causes turbidity. Okay, it causes its suspended solids are still present, very less suspended solids are present. So in fact if you see the suspended solids is about um, 20 NTU, the, the residual flocks will cause turbidity about uh, 
this turbidity is about 10 to 10 to 15 NTU I could say, NTU is nephlometric, nephlometric turbidity units, turbidity units, so NTU, NTU, this is a measure of the turbidity, there are still 15, 10 to 15 NTU. If you want to supply water to the population, the water should have less than 5. So still there is uh, turbidity, I cannot supply this water. And hence I have a filtration. The filtration is a unit in which this residual turbidity is removed. So I am producing the water here with turbidity probably less than 5 NTU. water has a turbidity of less than 5 NTU. That filtration is the unit which will remove the turbidity to this particular extent. Here if you see this particular thing is called what is called a pretreatment up to here, whatever chemicals addition and other things etc. pretreatment and uh, people call filtration to be treatment. So this is treatment. this is treatment and after filtration still the micro uh, still the water has microorganisms there is no unit these are the units which are aimed at removal of suspended particles that is aimed at removal of turbidity they are not there will be some marginal removal of uh, um, bacteria also pathogenic bacteria also will be there removal of uh, bacteria also will be there in this particular thing that is that is a marginal thing there is a bonus what you are getting removal of microorganisms so in order to remove the microorganisms make the water fit for the drinking purposes so then we have disinfection unit so next unit is the disinfection and disinfection is uh, the unit which produces the water which is uh, free of microorganisms microorganisms will not be there. Suppose if I want to supply water for the community at this time I will tell the standard for the microorganisms. There are two types of microorganisms which were counted. One is called a total count, total coliforms rather and another is a fecal coliforms. Fecal coliforms indicate the pollution from the fecal matter, this is a contaminate, contaminated water. So the, this is the most important parameter. So the fecal coliform should be equal to 0 organisms per 100 ml, around 0 organisms per 100 milliliters. Okay, there should not be any organisms. This uh, normally you will say 3 to 5 total coliforms. Okay. So what I have to do here is in disinfection, I am going to kill the all microorganisms which are fecal type, fecal organisms. So disinfection is done to kill the microorganisms present in the water, number 1. Number 2, it also offers some sort of a protection. We would like to have some residual uh, disinfectant residual disinfectant here, we will have residual disinfectant which will ensure, uh, it will take care of any contamination that will take place in the distribution system. So that is what it is, uh, residual disinfectant. So in fact, the chlorination is done in our country by, I mean the disinfection is done in our country by chlorination. In fact, chlorination and disinfection are synonymous. If I say disinfection, it means chlorination in our country. However, nowadays uh, the chlorination has certain uh, limitations. The people have found out the limitations of chlorination and we may go for, uh, I mean UV radiation. UV radiation is other method of uh, disinfecting the water and uh, UV radiation is going to be expensive. 
the chlorination is the most inexpensive method of killing the microorganisms present in water and hence we go for chlorination. Uh, chlorinate the water and uh, maintain some residual chlorine in water uh, to the extent of 0.5 milligrams per liter. Okay, we will have a 0.5 milligrams per liter of residual chlorine. to the extent of approximately 0.5 milligrams per liter. This particular thing 0.5 milligram per liter of residual chlorine will take care of contamination in distribution system to take care of contamination in distribution system DS, DS is a distribution system. That is how we try to do the water uh, treatment, these are the various units. In fact, uh, as we proceed in the course, we are going to discuss about the design aspects. Uh, design aspect of all these units besides the theoretical aspects. We will not make this um, you know these units as black boxes. We would like to tell you what exactly happens in this particular um, units and everything will be discussed in a great details in that particular thing. Now let us see one more uh, thing I would like to say here. We have sedimentation, sedimentation is a physical unit and we can apply physical unit process, we can apply what is called a classical mechanics, we can also we have also have to do certain experiments to design it. Coagulation, flocculation and uh, disinfections are chemical in nature, okay, chemical unit uh, processes and filtration is physical and physico chemical, just I want to make the distinction between these two things. Some of these units are um, physical, physical principles apply, some of the units are the chemical in nature. So, chemical principles have to be applied. So, we should know some amount of chemistry and uh, you know other uh, thing, other subjects. And third is the filtration again, uh, physical and physico chemical. So, in sort, in, in other words, the this field of water treatment is going to be some sort of you know admixture of chemical engineering, civil engineering, chemistry, mathematics, physics, so on and so forth. So, there is an interdisciplinary approach that is required for these things for the design of these things. Okay, now let us see, I would like to take one, one more example before uh, my time is off. So that is um, ground water, ground water is also a, a good source of water as far as the some of the towns and some of the cities are concerned or a part of towns and part of cities are con concerned. In fact, there is what is called conjunctive use of ground water and surface waters. You will get the water from the ground and also some river waters, sometimes they are admixed and then used so on and so forth. So now let us take the ground water, if you have a ground water, ground waters are generally free from microorganisms, generally free from microbes, pathogens. Of course, this depends upon the depth of the tube well. Okay. If it is a shallow tube well or a dug well or an open well, there is a possibility of microorganisms being present. If it were to be a deep tube well, then the microorganisms will not be there. But often we have a problem with respect to presence of iron and manganese. Fe and Mn, both are twins, both of them stay together. Okay, in ground waters, ground in ground water, Fe is present as uh, ferrous. That is in the reduced form. Similarly, manganese is present as manganese. That is also in the reduced form. So what we need to do is that in order to handle this, and the uh, the standard says that iron should not should be less than or equal to uh, 0.3 milligrams per liter and manganese should be less than or equal to 0 0.05 milligrams per liter. These are the standards, as per standards these are the two concentrations we have to achieve. If water has higher than, higher concentrations than this, then we need to go for the treatment. The treatment is, first of all I have to convert this iron, which is in the reduced form into ferric, ferrous to ferric. For that we will use aeration, that is what we have say uh, if you look at the slide, you have aeration. Aeration is a process by means of which oxidation is enhanced, ferrous to ferric. 
and after that we use what is called a coagulation and flocculation whatever we discussed earlier coagulation and flocculation can be used and we use alum as a coagulant lime as the addition to the coagulation and uh, the flocculation is done so during this process what will happen iron which is converted into uh, ferric form is precipitated as ferric hydroxide that's what it is happening this ferric hydroxide uh, ferric hydroxide is a very fine precipitate this fine precipitate has to be removed in order to remove this precipitate of uh, ferric hydroxide we use a uh, filtration after filtration we have to disinfect the water and supply the water to the people so that's what we have to do achieve uh, in the if water contains ground uh, ground water contains iron and manganese same thing will happen to manganese 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 to manganese and uh, that also precipitates as a uh, mno uh, mnoh4 that is a hydroxide of manganese and then that will also be precipitating and uh, then you will have the filtration and then disinfection. So there is a simultaneous removal of iron and manganese. So this is just one example I have given as far as the uh, ground water is concerned. So today's lecture uh, dealt with uh, the philosophy of treatment, philosophy of treatment. So what all we did is uh, water treatment plant we took it and we try to suggest what are the different units that are required for treating the water and before that we also have seen that how exactly the water quality varies uh, along as the river flows from one place to another place and uh, due to anthropogenic activity as well as the natural activities.